Asher. I'm Kate. And I'm Stricker. And we are fifth grade students at Star Elementary. And you're listening to the West Data Podcast. For me, I am a product of public schools. Oh, yeah. And I'm a huge advocate Me too. And of public I'm schools, the choir. right? Absolutely. Yep. They, and people say, oh, you're running the, the, you know, that elite school where they audition and keep kids out. And it's not that at all. Right. It's not that at all. That's not even where my heart is. Hello and welcome to the West Data Podcast. I'm Katie Rodenbaugh and this is Ken Hyde. So great to be here. It yeah. is great to yeah. be here. And we have a great conversation continuing yeah. in the arts education, it's so right? so fun. Yeah. It, it is really fun. great. And we, so our guest today is Chris Housel. He's the principal at Idaho Fine Arts yes. Academy, yes. commonly referred to as IFA, yeah. IFA. Just right across the way over here. It's real close to the District Service Center where we are. So yeah. it's nice, to, uh, and nice it's, to have him here. What a dynamic conversation. I mean, he is Huge. such a multifaceted um, artist and performer, it's musician. True. Um, but also, you know, academic and athletic and all those kinds of things that really encompass the school. It, it really is super cool. And I think you're going to love this conversation. And, and, and this is kind of weird. If you're listening, great. I, we love that you're listening. This is one of those interesting conversations, though, that I, we're going we're gonna to drop in a lot of footage of IFA, yeah. of the kids performing. So it, it might you might find uh, that actually watching this episode on YouTube is worth your time, too. Because, Absolutely. Uh, but hey, we love that you're joining us either, either listening, watching, whatever. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. Here it is with uh, Chris Housel. All right, Chris, you, like many <laughs> artists, have quite an eclectic background, and it's so <laughs> beneficial for our students. So why don't you just share a little bit about yourself, the Chris Housel uh, principal of IFA, and yeah. then also Chris Housel, the musician. Well, thank you. First of all, thanks for having me here That's today. It's great to have you today. And I, yeah. and I love it. Yeah. You just kind of personal background a little bit. So My just background. kind of what led you to this, and ha- and yeah. you know, the co- it's a kaleidoscope. I think yeah, it's super it, interesting. it it is for sure. You know, I'm I am a lifetime educator. You know, I yeah. started as a yeah. teacher in 1992, in then the Meridian School District, the West Data School District, right. as a high school, believe it or not, English teacher, English and Spanish at Meridian High, and then pretty much through the 90s at Centennial High School, yeah. baseball coach. You know, I played um, baseball in college on a baseball scholarship. A lot of people, they know me through music outside of uh, education, and they thought, oh, you must have been a music teacher. Actually wasn't a music teacher. So I, didn't, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't prepare yeah. in music. I, I have pretty close to the equivalent of a minor. I studied uh, classical music and a little bit music composition with a great professor at NNU back in the day. And so I do have that that music background, but I wasn't trained that way. My undergrad was, I was a lit major, you know, so music's major. just your passion. Well, I come from a big family. I've got five older sisters and oh, that's all, gotta be fun. I have three older sisters. Yeah, so all, I mean, like I can't imagine <laughs> yeah. five. I have no sisters. And so. they're all, they're all, and a couple younger brothers and music runs, definitely runs in our family. You know, my dad's side, uh, my dad's an engineer and yeah, worked you know, railroad, that sort of thing. My mom, arts, music, and all that. So it was a kind of, and my dad was athlete. So it was just kind of this kaleidoscope. I love that eclectic right? kind of, yeah. yeah. And so there yeah. was never a quiet moment in the household <laughs> house growing up where I did in uh, kind of the hills of rural nor- Northern California before I moved to Idaho back in the day, a long time ago. But just busy, lots of music, pianos and guitars and singing and all that. And, you know, even some of my first memories. Uh, back in the day, six, seven years old, sitting at the old player piano that was in our house. Oh, yeah. All my older sisters played and sang, and I hadn't had any <laughs> formal lessons yet. And I just remember being able to go, and I would hear what they were doing, and then I would start to figure it out. That's like the Suzuki style of, it, there's a Suzuki method Absolutely. of learning, right? Where you yeah, learn by there is. Ear. Yeah, well, and that's, that is mostly how we experience music first, sure. right? It's not through the written form. It's right we learn through hearing and experiencing right. music. And so I still remember this day, this famous song by Peter Frampton that my sisters all were singing called I'm In You. And I just remember uh, figuring it out for myself, like six, seven years old and dating myself here. But, um, oh no, I'm ago. with you because my, my two older sisters, but yeah. would, same thing, would play yeah. the pianos yeah. and anyway, yeah. you're, you're preaching to the choir, Yeah, man. so I just yeah. started, and then my, my mom, you know, it was really, it was her who got me the piano lessons. You know, my dad wanted me to play pro baseball or football or whatever, and I did. But my mom got me the piano lessons. She realized I needed them. And so, you know, because I was figuring things out by ear and figuring out basic chord structures, even on my own, melodic structures and starting to play even then with music. But it was That's all so around cool. me. It was around me all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so that, that was kind of my background um, growing up. Music was just always a part of my life and took lessons on and off all the way through high school. But I was an athlete. 
um, pretty serious athlete, three sport athlete in high school and then in yeah. college. And so uh, music was always something piano for me, especially was just something I always had. And I actually started writing my first songs on the piano when I was about 13 or 14, just little, little tiny songs. Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 13 or 14. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, what's it, what's it like to, to compose music, you know, and, and I have maybe two questions here because, and they're very different questions, yeah. but I, like being an athlete and a musician, what are the similarities? What do you learn from each of those things? And then what's it like to compose music? What's that like? Well, uh, people ask me that all the time. Like, how do you, how do you write those songs? <laughs> Did you see and it or yeah? Yeah, it, yeah. You know, it's different. It's, it's sometimes it's, it's one experience. Another time it's, it's another experience. I will say for me that music was first and foremost emotional. Music is an emotional thing. Sure. And oh, so yeah. I would say for me, um, you know, I, I learned, I took lessons for a long time. I got pretty technically proficient and all that. That's all important, but that's not where composition for me comes from. Composition is just like this very personal, emotional place and just a fascination with literally with the piano when I was a kid. It's like a puzzle, this, this 88 <laughs> key puzzle. And if you pressed this key with this key, it made a certain sound. Yeah. And so for me, there was curiosity and it just was a natural kind of outflow of just sitting down at this amazing instrument that's now, you know, 300 some odd years old <laughs> that they that they uh, they figured out back in Italy, a guy named Cristofori. And um, it's like a, it's like a, a puzzle is yeah. what I would say. So to compose, it's emotional, but it's also practical. You know, you have to learn kind of some basic rules of how how that instrument works. And every sure. instrument's different. Sure. But in the end, it kind of starts in, in the heart for me, kind of moves to the head, into the fingers yeah. and everywhere else. Well, you know, <laughs> you cool. mentioned being, um, you know, a, a collegiate athlete, played yeah, baseball in college, but you were also um, on academic scholarship. I was. Do you think playing music was kind of a, um, is it a stress relief for you? Is it a way to kind of just check out and feel, not think about the pressures of yeah. sports or academics? Or? Depends on the situation. I mean, I would say <laughs> for the most part, um, yes. Yes, for me, music was a relief. Mm -hmm. It was a safe place for me to go and express myself when I was having a hard day or a, a difficult time. Sure, uh, I would go to the piano a lot. I mean, for me, that's that was uh, a really and still is to this day a very very important thing. Music is really personal to me, like it is to all of us on oh, some sure, level, sure. right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was a stress relief for sure. Yeah. Still is, uh, no doubt. But performance which is different performance can be great it can also be incredibly stressful right and i've had a few of those sure. in my in my career you know when you're walking out in front of um in 2005 i had just recorded my second piano album and i was an assistant principal at los god at the time and the national <sighs> association of secondary school principals invited me to the moscone center in san francisco to open up their convention and they're like we just want you to do like 45 minutes or an hour you know i was well, then, still really young. <laughs> right, <laughs> and, right. and I played in front of some big crowds, but I'm on a grand, and it was like Mario Cuomo and the oh, and, you know, President Bush's uh, Secretary of Education right. and, and like <laughs> two, th two or 3,000 of my colleagues. And the Moscone Center, I mean, San Francisco. Yeah, I played it. It was yeah. so cool. Oh, and, you know, no I mean, stress, I'm, from, no Northern, stress there. I'm no from, stress. from there. I have a sister who actually is a, a, a really um, well-known um, professional recording artist herself who lives in the Bay Area. Oh, so, nice. so it kind of runs in the family a little bit for sure, but that's stressful. Oh, but it's also oh. stressful just walking out in front of 100, 100 people and sitting down. And the piano's different, just like any instrument where you're kind of, it's that naked instrument, you're alone with it. Right. Uh, it's not like it's playing just, ensemble, yeah. it's not playing like in a rock, rock band, it's just you and a piano, which you're going to hear everything. It's not very forgiving, <laughs> right? You do right, hear everything. Right, you do hear everything. And so for me, it definitely, I have my stressful moments, for sure. Yeah. Can you yeah. teach that? I mean, can you teach that performance spirit to students, or is it just kind of an innate thing? Do you think kids are just mm. born to be performers, yeah. or do you mm. think, you know? I, you well, really these, you know, that's a great question, by the way, Katie. I would say it's both. Yeah. You know, two things can be correct or true at once sure. Right? Right. and sure. so for me i would say my observations my experience personally is i think somewhere deep down i i'm i am a pretty competitive person and, <laughs> and always have been trying I, as i get older i'm not as competitive or maybe i'm competitive in a different way right um some people may disagree with that <laughs> but uh, i would say that for me performance is something that th there are a lot of people that they just have a drive they want to do it 
Yeah. It doesn't mean necessarily they want to, to do it in front of a thousand people. Sometimes people just want to perform for themselves. They mm. just want to be yeah. proficient or play oh, an sure. instrument. Like sure. I find that's kind of where I am in my life. I just want to play my piano. And if it's just I'm my only audience, right. sometimes that's the best thing. You're just refining your craft, Yeah, right? yeah. In fact, a lot of times I, I'm just happy with my piano, yeah. you know, just yeah. sitting and yeah. enjoying and in terms of can you teach it, I think you can model it. I think you can bring kids to the table. I think you can, you know, my staff at, at IFA is unbelievable. My music teachers there, all the art teachers, they're professionals in their own right. Right. Frankly, sure. they far sure. exceed me and their musical abilities and talents, and they are so great. And they model that for our students. And, yeah. you know, every kid's kind of along, uh, they're in their own place on their journey. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's both. Yeah, you can yeah, show it. Good. But I think in, in deep down... You know, you either want to do that and get up <laughs> right. in front of people mm, that's or, interesting. You, or you don't. I, well, and I, I, I think what's interesting, too, though, uh, is, um, you know, we talk about um, you talk about being a competitor. And one of the things I'm as I'm listening to you talk, you're a lifelong educator. I love that you're a lifelong educator. Yeah, I'm a teacher first. How yeah. how different is it to teach someone to throw a baseball versus teaching someone uh, chord structure on a piano? What what are, what are the similarities? Oh what gosh, are the differences? That's such a great question. Again, you guys, are, you guys really thought through some of these questions. <laughs> Katie gave me that question. I didn't know we were going to talk about talk about baseball, which is great. I mean, I'm still you know I'm passionate about a few things still. Sure. Music. Um, baseball, I still love that game. My boys still play, I was telling her. Yeah. And so, uh, and I coached for years. And I was a pitcher. I was a two-way player in college. And uh, and so pitching, for example, let's just take that to answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Can you really teach the kid the mechanics? The, you know, you, you can. You can absolutely teach them certain fundamentals sure. about an athletic, uh, you know, whatever it is, whether it's hitting or pitching. But in the end, I've kind of learned, first of all, everybody comes to the table with their own abilities, and my job as a coach, as a teacher, as uh, a mentor is to actually understand maybe their biomechanics, their proprioceptive abilities as a pitcher, their ability, and then work toward that with them. Instead of trying to make them and mold them into something I want them to be, right. mm. you turn it around and you try to cre help them create what they're supposed mm. to be on the piano, whether it's you're on a mound, whether you're you know playing guitar, playing piano, singing. Uh, that's what it's about. It's about developing your ability. Well, that's, that's what really great leaders do. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's clearly yeah. why we have you heading up IFA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, great leaders bring out the best, recognizing you know what your your inherent qualities are, and then expounding on those. Yeah. So I think that's cool. Thank you. And, and I have to say that the talent. Uh, just across the street here at Idaho Fine oh, Arts yeah. Academy. Yeah. It is humbling for me every day to walk in there. I mean, there are kids that surround me every day. They can dance, they can sing, they play instruments. There there are a half a dozen piano players at that school that can literally play circles around me. They're just <laughs> remarkable. So I mean, cool. remar and it's really, really awesome to watch. Well, I, that makes me think of when you talk about those, those kids over there across the street, music or dance as storytelling. I mean, with, with what I do with uh, with the district, I'm literally a visual storyteller, um, creating film, creating videos, yeah. that kind of thing. What a, what about storytelling yeah. is is so cool about what you do as an educator over there? Well, each of those art forms is is a medium for storytelling, right? And you know, we have several. It's not just music. A lot of people think. Uh, it's just music. It's not. It's it is uh, contemporary dance. It's and it's not just one form of music. It's mm -hmm. vocal music. It's it's uh, classical music. It's contemporary music. And think when I think when you think classical music, think don't think of a big orchestra. Although we could right. do that, think small ensemble. Think mm -hmm. smaller groups. When you think about our contemporary program, yeah, jazz. But think rock and roll. Think school of rock. Yeah, yeah. And we don't have Jack Black over there. Oh, that's too bad. That'd be cool. But, that's too bad. but we have that. And then we have a, an amazing theater program. We've done musicals, theater productions, and we started a, a film, right. a film program yeah. this yeah. last year. Every one of those meetups, and then our visual arts, of course. Right. And so make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. <laughs> right. Um, each of them, it, it's a medium for storytelling. And they each have their own way of doing that. Some of them visually, whether it's film mm -hmm. uh, or the visual arts program, music, the vocalists, they can use their words. But, you know, those those instrumental musicians, they tell a story as well with their instruments, right. whether they're using words or not. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. 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 That's really and cool. storytelling comes with maturity. I, you know, I was I was an English teacher. I was a, I'm, a, I'm a language teacher. 
And so for me, I liken it to creative writing class or teaching students how to find their voice when they're when they're writing, whether it's an essay and or, or whatever it is. It could be an argumentative essay. I a lot of times think about creative writing because that's mm -hmm. very very kind personalized. And yeah. well, no, I mean I'm I'm a horrible creative writer to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, um, okay. I'm a really good um, analytical writer yeah. and argumentative essays. My wife would especially tell me about that <laughs> argumentative side, but. Uh, you know, I'm much more analytical writer, actually. But the storytelling, like the creative voice, the, the one place I, I do feel like I can do a little of that is on the piano in my own way. Mm -hmm. I'm a much better storyteller on the piano than I am in the written word, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, they're all mediums, right? They're all mediums for telling your story. West Ada families, we invite you to attend one of our upcoming Advanced Opportunities Nights. These nights are available to our students and families currently in grades 8 through 10 and will provide you with comprehensive information on a variety of topics, everything from fast forward funds to honors classes. For more information and a complete list of dates and times, please click the link in the show notes. Well, Chris, again, it's great to have you here. I think one of the things I'd like, I'd really like to clarify for our parents that, that might be watching that are like, well, is my kid right for IFA? Yeah. The audition process, yeah. the whole, yeah. it, it's a different process. Can you walk us through that? What sure. what does that look like for our parents that are that are watching today? Great question. I, I would say that is the biggest kind of mystique that surrounds the school a little bit is what is this audition oh, process? Sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Right. I, I know right. how the application so I, process sure, works. But. Sure. And so we have uh, several schools of choice in the West Data School District, and they're all lottery based. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a couple of district sponsored charters as well. And those are linked to our school district and, and the school district authorizes them. But the schools of choice, the one that is the most unique is, is actually ours because we actually have an audition process. And it is a competitive process to get into yeah, the school, right? right? Yeah. And just that, we were talking about performers and being competitive. Oh. It, it is competitive to get, to get in, but it's not as competitive as you think. We have high-level students that are you know, very talented, but you'd be surprised. So, for example, you know, we have about uh, 315 applications as of today. I just looked mm. before I came oh, over. okay. Wow. We'll have about 120 seats. So you have about a one in three chance, roughly, okay. of getting in, which aren't bad. Mm. Right. You know, aren't bad at all. And, you know, most of our students, just like our students who participate in athletics, most of our students are going to, who, who study the art form at our school, they're going to go on to a university or the world of work or even in a lot of our kids. It's been amazing. Some of our kids are going into the CTE route now uh, after yeah. school. We have some yeah. kids that are, it's interesting. We have kids that are doing all sorts of things. Very few of them are going to go on to the Juilliards of the world. Right. Right. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about just like professional athletes or even college one, college mm -hmm. athletes. A lot of people don't realize less than two percent of high school athletes right. ever sign sure. a division one scholarship to, oh. to play a sport. Yeah. Right. But but every every parent thinks their kid's going to have a D1 <laughs> scholarship. Trust, oh, trust me. Yeah. I, I, I know oh, yeah. I see it all the time. Right. And um, and so what I would say about the process is it's competitive, but it's not it's not this cutthroat uh, experience. It's actually a great experience. And uh, it kids, the other thing that's great is even if you don't get in, you, you're placed on a waiting list. Right. And a lot of kids come back and say, that was a great experience. It's almost like a job interview. Yeah. Sure. You show up, you interview, you learn, you yeah. perform yeah. for yeah. one of our teachers and then another professional that, that works in that art form. They okay. come in and judge. We have rubrics that have been developed by our school district. Those are tweaked every year. It's for a very, each of the majors? Each of the majors. Oh, so in cool. the seven majors, we have six in, in, high, in the middle school, seven in high school, like I okay. said before, contemporary dance, visual arts, vocal music, classical, classical music, uh, contemporary music, theater, and then film, our right. new film pr program. And right. like in film, they actually submit a short film. That Love is cool. what they do for <laughs> their audition. It. And then we interview them. Visual arts, they they submit a portfolio and then it's evaluated and they show up for a live draw. Oh. Because we actually need to s make sure that that's what's this submitted is in the portfolio right. is <laughs> kind of the same person maybe drawing the, the live draw. Sure. But you've got to show up. You show up, you sing, you play your instrument, you act. It's all right there, and there's preparation. In fact, tonight, when I get done here, we have a workshop that our staff does for interested uh, students and parents. They can come, and for three hours tonight, we will uh, talk with 
potential students and oh, their parents cool. about, here's how the process works. Here's how you get ready for it. So they're not going into it blind, oh, which is great. great. Yeah. That is so cool. I was a thespian in high school. And if I had had the option to go to a yeah. school like this and you know, be in your black box theater and yeah. audition, I, yeah. I think I probably would have taken advantage of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is a great experience. But like a lot of niche schools, schools of choice, there's, uh, you know, you've used, we use the word sometimes magnet. And we don't really use that word. We talk about schools of choice. But the magnet is the arts. Right. Right. right? Yeah. The magnet yeah. is at Galileo is it's a STEM school or the tech school. It's technology, CTE. We have all sorts of different magnets that pull those students uh, into sure. a certain type uh, of education beyond the traditional curriculum. And so, you know, that is our magnet, if you will. But the school of choice is focused on the arts. And the other thing is about the audition process is once you get in, you're in. Right. You don't have to re-audition every no, year. See you a later, not. kid. No, you don't. You don't. And we just were so careful about that. And again, put it on the line. Come on, show up. <laughs> Let's do, do it. This. We love Let's it. Do this. We've got, and, and I'm really excited since we've moved, you know, we, we sold uh, our building and, and the district. We've been really fortunate to build a really just a beautiful new facility right yeah. here yeah. in the heart of the district where we could provide transportation, be more centrally located before we were in Eagle, way out on the north side of the district. Really hard for a kid out here on the yeah. south side of the district sacrificing an hour and a half of their day to get over there. So we're, we're centralized now, which is great. And uh, there's just uh, some more equity in that sure. of yeah. access for students, which makes me uh, really happy. Some people would say, well, you have a competitive process at the school to get into the school which we're allowed to do, actually, because mm. we are a, a school of choice within a school district. Well, and yeah, something cool. to note on that, which I, I thought was interesting, I learned um, at a student council, or what do you call it, um, student? Our student leadership? Student or, leadership yeah, our student program. Sen our student, student senate. senate. That's yeah. what I was trying to think yeah. of. Yeah. Visiting with your student senate um, students, and they mentioned the inability to compete because it is a performance or um, audition-based <clears throat> school. Yeah. It's not okay to put the, your students against any one of our other traditional high school students yeah. in their, you know, their performing arts. So yeah, it's a little complicated in that it it just it's we're not members of the Idaho High School Activities Association, right? Mm -hmm. As a, because we're just a non traditional school, and because we do have an audition process to gain entrance to the right. school, we're right. not allowed to to be a part of the association. But we've never really asked to be as a right. school. It's kind of one of those choices you make when you come. Sure, sure, and. It's actually for our kids, it's, it really hasn't been that big of a deal, to be honest with yeah. you. Mm. And that's the great thing about choice. Uh, it's also the challenge. I always say the thing about <laughs> choice is oh, you have to make one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, right. people say, well, I have to try out, you know, if I'm at Eagle High, you know, there are different levels of choir, centennial. Yeah, but you're already in the school. Right. Right. So, and it, or, you know, I have to go out for the football team. Well, or the baseball team. Yeah, there's a cut program there too. You, you know, you might not make the baseball or the basketball team, but you don't. It doesn't mean you can't attend a school. So that's the right. distinction. Yeah. And it's kind of a little bit tricky. Uh, but, you know, it, it's worked well for us. Sure. It really has. Sure. And we, we never want it to be a hurdle. We want it to be an experience for kids. And in the end, we want kids who are passionate oh, about yeah. the arts. Yeah. It's not just about the pure talent because we all know that just the talent, it only takes you so far. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Well, and, and this is a, a free, publicly funded school. 100%. What, what I'm really proud of that. I, and, yeah. and, and, and I think there's misconceptions maybe about iPhone. Yeah. What, what are yeah. some of those misconceptions a, you deal with? Su such an important question, Ken. And, and just my own personal background, and I will share this. You know, I... Look, I come from a big family. I come from pretty humble beginnings. I, I grew up with not a lot, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. except for sure. you know amazing support of loving family. But I grew up pretty humble, and um, for me, I am a product of public schools. Oh yeah, and I'm a huge advocate. Me too. And, of public uh, schools, the choir. right? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And people say, "Oh, you're running the the you know that elite school where they audition and keep kids out," and it's not that at all. Right. It's right. not that at all. And that's not even where my heart is. Um, I, I, we're a part of a bigger system here. We are a West Data school. Right. On paper, how we're governed, the policies, all that, we are just like any other school, yeah. with the exception of just a few little things. We're not a charter. Uh, we are not um, a private school. Mm -hmm. And so we're just like any and other you school. you meet all the academic requirements that any other student would get at any yeah. of our choices, right? Well, like math, science, English. We don't just meet them, we exceed them. Yeah. We are a, yeah. an exceptionally, um, we perform at a very high level academically. 
Yeah. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Part of that is, uh, I mean, it's it's myriad, right? There are a lot of factors involved with why our students achieve. And yeah, we have a lot of engaged parents. Mm-hmm. And I do believe that there's a lot of support starts in the home. Oh, 100%. for sure. But there's so sure. many things that we uh, we can't control those things. But the things we can control, time on task, connection, building a culture with students, mm-hmm. making sure that not one of them slips through the cracks. You know, and I'm and I'm really serious about that part of it because. Again, I'll come back to my point. One or two percent of these kids are ever going to be, and we have a few of them. They could really do it. They could go big time, right? Right. And sure. that's why I'm nice to every kid because I know <laughs> if one of them, nice to him anyway. But I just say I, you're I, never I, nice to me, today, Chris. Come today, on. Today we had an alumni. She just graduated last year. Sammy Sutcliffe. She just oh, yeah, graduated. Yeah. Yeah. You guys interviewed her last yes, year. She's in New I had York. A chance to talk to her. Yeah. yeah her uncle's the fan. Ironic, the baseball thing. Yeah. Her Rick uncle's Sutcliffe. Rick Sutcliffe. Sure, big. Sure. You know, she brought yeah. me a baseball signed by yeah, him last year. She so came cool. and saw me today, just an hour ago. Oh no She's way. here. You know, and I'm so nice. I'm like, now remember, Sammy, when you make it big in uh, musical theater on Broadway. <laughs> Remember, we're going to start that endowment. Sammy's right, tickets. That's right. But <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you. I apologize, Chris. Yeah. But Sammy was one of our West Ada Ready. So Absolutely. If, you, if you're watching or listening, yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah. Out, go back and check our yeah. West Ada Ready last year. She's, she's, she's an amazing She's very student. inspiring. Yeah. But to my yeah. point about access and just this is a public school, and, and actually things like when you look at things like free and reduced numbers and poverty rates and things like that, we, we mirror a lot of other schools in the district. We're right. not... Uh, we don't just skim off the top or take only a certain uh, strata of student. That's that's a myth. It really is a myth. And if you've got the only thing is if, if you have a modicum of talent, I always say, and you're willing to come, you I like your odds. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. like your odds of showing up. Any student in West Data can come and uh, be a part of, of IFA. Well, and you had the fourth highest science ISAT mm-hmm. scores in West Data last year. How, yeah. how proud are you of that? I, they, I'm just thrilled. I mean, there are some things that I'm really excited about. We had a great year last year in um, in the science classroom, like we do every year. Our English language arts scores are always in the high 90s. Sure. A lot of those kids love to write and love to read and are very motivated. We're actually in non-traditional schools in Idaho where we were the number one we had the highest highest achievement scores in uh, English language arts, and then our math score uh, scores as well continue to just grow and do well. And you know, there's always this myth that it's an either or proposition with the arts. That you know, if you're an arts uh, oriented person, that you can't be a good student. Nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. So many of our uh, students, uh, our dancers, our musicians. You know, there is a lot of discipline and focus that it takes to be to be a great dancer at a high level. Right to play the piano or play guitar or sing at a high level theater arts just memorizing all those lines it's just unbelievable the visual artists right and so i would have no shot yeah (laughs) arts and academics it's not either or it's either or and more that it goes together Mm. just like we say a lot of times about our student athletes the same thing there's a lot of discipline oh of course that is involved there and that translates to the classroom so we're really proud of that we're really proud of our four and five year cohort graduation rates you know, just three years ago, we had a hundred percent graduation rate. Wow. Uh, this year, we're looking about ninety-seven on our cohort. We just engage students, and we make sure if they do leave us, that they land somewhere else in our district or in a school where we know they're going to graduate and take those next steps. Super cool. Well, you know, if if you're watching on YouTube today, I, I'm going to show some 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 video of that beautiful new building over cool. there. Yeah. One of my coolest days at West Ada was when we moved you guys yeah. from Eagle down here to the new building right across from the district. Oh, service fine. center yeah i would just love yeah. now now it's been a while you've, you've had some time in that building i would just love to hear your yeah. thoughts about yeah. getting to teach over there what's what's that yeah. like yeah it, it's been a great move that was almost uh, two years ago in about two weeks yeah and that was a wild day i don't think i slept for <laughs> six weeks and we moved a school over a weekend oh, crazy goodness. over yeah. a weekend and yeah. you know our district staff were were amazing um you know, Dave Roberts and Dr. Bub and the whole crew, everybody really stepped up. And Ken, you were there. I remember was fun. moving boxes. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Good I, day. We, we did have a problem that day because it was starting to snow. <laughs> and I had like, I had like, right. we got 42 pianos on campus over there. And I had like 28 of them on the sidewalk surrounding because we couldn't get a certificate of occupancy from City of Meridian. Oh, and goodness. so we were waiting on that. Yes. Anyway, we got in there. Bottom line is, is we moved everything in. And I remember, um, Monday morning, we opened the door. The kids came in. It's like we've been there the whole time. <laughs> All the technology, right like the IT team from West Data, amazing. Yeah. They are and then amazing. Our, yeah, they were amazing. I mean, I just go on and on about that. But how does it feel now? I, I'll tell you, it is, it's great to be in a, in a very unique school, but mm-hmm. also to be in a very safe 
modern building yeah. that really enhances instruction. It's great. And um, I love love the facility. The facility's yeah. great. You know, we still have a couple things left down the road that we hope to do long term that we didn't quite get get done just because of you know COVID and oh, uh, sure. budget constraints and things. things like that with our um, our auditorium long term. But we have what we need, and it's been a great move, and mm-hmm. the kids love it. It's really cool to get to um, go in there. You know, various reasons that I'm on yeah. your campus, but to see, you know, as you're walking through, you see. Some kids over here on a ballet bar practicing yeah, a dance, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, you hear kids tuning up instruments, yeah, and yes. um, you see, you know, you can go over to. I mentioned the Black Box yeah, Theater before, yeah, just because that's my yeah. soft spot. But um, it's a really cool, unique space to yeah. perform in. It's small, it's intimate, it's you know, connects your you just, performers with the audience. Katie just said that you're tapping into exactly, um, exactly kind of our secret sauce, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. intimacy, yeah, and connection. And so several years ago, you know, 10 years ago, we, we, it was a big, it was a big risk to just buy that building oh, and, sure. and roll the dice. Right. Uh, but we did it. And then about three years in our, our district leadership at that time, myself and others, we really knew we needed a new facility. So we, we kind of went on a road trip, you know, we went to Los Angeles and I went to um, San Diego and New Mexico and different places. And we looked at performing arts schools and I've been in a lot all over the United States, but we looked at those schools and then we, we kind of took the best and the maybe not as great, some <laughs> of that stuff. And we came back and we realized that the intimacy piece, the smallness sure. piece, we built it for about 450 kids long-term. And what you see is is this connection and this integration of performance. So, you know, in our big comprehensive high schools, we do integrate, you know, and it's great. Yeah. But we really do it on a different level where all art forms sometimes at the same time perform in the same show. So you've got classical musicians who wrote, wrote the music or playing the music for dancers who are dancing while visual artists are presenting their so art. So cool. While, I love that. while you have, you know, and, and maybe it's all together or it's all part of the same show, but it's arts integration. And that's the power of the art uh, well, right it's the sum of the whole it's the synergy of it sure and that that is and it's also still on a smaller level and so that and that's kind of how the world of arts works right well and you mentioned that along the intimacy and the integration something i just have to shout out about your school is the um, model that you use for i think maybe call it families or houses or something where the students we have are families families literally yes. you know okay. we're six through 12 and so we have a, another side of our house which is just amazing you know we have the ac- the academic side and the art side and everybody thinks oh that's got to be like oil and water but no. it's not it's actually it works really well and then that third stool is is our civic excellence piece, our leadership piece, our mentoring piece. You know, building community, mm. and so uh, our student leaders, especially the older students, they actually we put them in families and they mentor our younger students. That's so cool, and it's just awesome. So we're six twelve, right. which is a totally different vibe than a Unique traditional model, middle school yep. or a traditional high school. It's actually a common model in art schools across the United States. It's very common, actually. It's How is, is, that, is that helpful, though, for the younger kids? I would assume that the, the yeah. younger kids can be mentored. Is that is that true? Have you Absol- found that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we find those kids that they, they really do. They work with them. There are things that, that we can't even do as teachers where maybe it's that junior or senior. Oh. I'm a theater. I'm an aspiring theater major, and I really look up to that kid, and, and, and that kid's working with me. There's a little bit of inspiration there, building those connections. So that's a great thing. That wasn't my idea. That was student leadership uh, folks and uh, Brendan Earl and his team. Just it's it's been great. It builds community. Students and families, we are thrilled to inform you that all 58 schools within our district, including elementary and middle schools, are now actively participating in the West Ada Athletics and Activities Fundraiser. This initiative aims to raise funds for various sports programs, extracurricular activities, and other essential resources that contribute to the holistic development of our students. In addition to the fundraising, it offers you the opportunity to win some incredible raffle prizes. For details, please click the link in today's show notes. All right, Chris, I'm curious for, you know, we have a lot of parent listeners sure. and finding the right <clears throat> fit, the right kind of student. You mentioned the audition process yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about middle school. Let's say we have a sixth grader mm-hmm. who auditions. Yep. 
they don't get in that first yeah. year. Do you yeah. encourage them to keep coming back? Absolutely. Keep, yeah. 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 In fact, we've had several students. We had one young lady who auditioned three times, oh, got in her. on the fourth time in ninth grade, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, because we're still so small. That cohort's such a small number. It's, it's sixth grade. We we take a certain number every year, but seventh seventh grade's tough. Eighth grade, we've been able to double up. Now we have more seats. But sometimes kids don't get in the first time, and mm-hmm. they, they come back. And so we love that when they come back and audition again. And about 25% of those kids that do get in every year, they get called off the waiting list. Because it does uh, happen. You know, a kid gets uh, in, and sure. then they decided something happened, or they moved, or they decided they want to stay at their traditional school after all. Those things happen. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, in ter- but in terms of fit... <laughs> You know, who, who's the kid that should be auditioning? I, to me, it's, again, I'm going to come back to, obviously, the choice, the focus is about the arts. Right. And academics are foundational. But you have to have a passion and interest in an art form. Mm-hmm. You really Because you're going to spend 90 minutes a day. We're on the AB block, 6 through 12. Even our middle schoolers, sure. it's every day. Those are your electives. Yeah. So you're going to do fewer things. You're gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna mm-hmm. really focus, right? Almost hyper focus to the point you gotta really love it, right? Yeah. And I would say that's the biggest thing. And then just the culture. It's a smaller school. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have traditional athletics. If you want to be involved in athletics, you can do that at your traditional high school I or think middle that's school. Really important. I a lot think of people I, don't know yeah, that. Yeah, I don't want I don't want families to think they might yeah. be limited by Not coming here. No, no, we've had uh, great groups, and it's kind of hard for me sometimes because I'll have kids that are swimming. Granted, now we don't have a lot of football players at IFA. <laughs> sure, uh, sure, we don't. But we have kids who swim. I've right. played uh, varsity soccer and different sports over the years. Um, all those sorts of things, and. They just leave just like any other kid, go right to practice. Right. right. Just like at Renaissance. You know, right. it's the same thing. Same you thing. can go participate. And we have a handful of those kids. But in terms of <laughs> fit and interest, yeah, it's definitely – is there a personality? Is there an artistic yeah. kind of soul? Yeah, I think so, a little bit. Yeah. And, and kids say this. Parents say this all the time when their kids get in. They're like, oh, we found our people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just like – and they're my people. I'm home. Like, you know, right. I am. Yeah. They're my people for yeah. sure. I, yeah. You know, I was an athlete and all that kind of stuff. But my soul, I truly am more of the, the artistic soul. And you just know who you are. That's cool. Yeah. And so that's, that's what I would say about just fit, you know, when you're in the right spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, 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 and to your point, it, they're, they're microscopically focused. They're, they're going 90 minutes. How much does additional practice, how much, do, yeah. how much homework yeah. are they doing? I mean, yeah. is, is that even a thing? And how does that, how does that play in? Right. So it is not, you, you know, we don't mandate that you have private lessons outside, nor, nor can we. Oh, sure. But a lot of kids do because they're just passionate about, especially in dance, competitive dance oh, is yeah. so oh, competitive. Yeah. Whether oh, it's yeah. cheer dance, and this is not a traditional cheer dance program. It's more contemporary dance, ballet, uh, those sorts of things. And what I would say is that is very competitive. A lot of young ladies, mostly young ladies. We do have had a few male dancers over the years, but that is a very competitive, mm, competitive field. Right. Sure. Oh, yeah. We have yeah. pre-professional oh. dancers. We, classical music, we have some amazing players who spend hours on their instruments outside of school and in school. You know, and, and then we have additional kind of study time and lab time where when kids have the opportunity in their schedule, not only do they get the regular morning class in music, but they might have an additional where we would have another elective, another opportunity mm-hmm. to play. So we're trying to maximize the arts. That is that facility back to that mm-hmm. really is um, it's a conservatory model. We have all those individualized practice rooms and kids spend a lot of time there. But outside of school. We survey our kids every year. It said anywhere from, you know, an hour to some kids are too much, <laughs> right? right? Almost right. too much if there's such a thing. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, we talked about earlier dealing with criticism and adversity. I mean, you, yeah. you've, you've used the word competition a ton. Yeah. What? Listen, I'm a creative. I I, I get people telling me, oh, Ken, that video was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> that's just yeah. that's just part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Your baby's ugly. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you deal with that? How do you, how do you teach kids to deal with adversity uh, in their art form? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me focus in on you used the word creative and, and used it as uh, a noun, not as an adjective. We're creatives, and a lot of times creatives, and I'm a creative, uh, but you can be competitive and creative. But a lot of our creatives, we do have a tendency sometimes, I think, to maybe. Um, struggle a little bit to take criticism. Somebody <laughs> told me one of my pretty little piano. I do pe- that. Trust yeah. me, I, I, I've heard some criticism, not nicer views about my pretty little <laughs> uh, flowery piano pieces over the years. And you just, you have to learn to deal with that. Right. And so 
what I would say about criticism is when you go to an audition, whether it's an audition to play in a local rock band or and you do got it, you get auditioned or you're on Broadway, you're, you're going to be told the hard truth. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it is harsh. The arts are hardcore. Yeah. They yeah. really are. Music is, I, I tell the kids all the time, you know, for me, my experience, music is very cutthroat. There's a lot of, the arts are harsh. And especially when you get into those big environments where it's like, I'm going to go make it big wherever. You might go to 100 auditions and never get a shot or finally get that commercial. It is absolutely a challenging, challenging thing. But what I would say is also that model's changing in our world mm. because of technology now. Oh. You know, 20 years ago when I wanted to make my first you know, CD, piano record, I had to fly to Nashville. <laughs> I had to, you know, go to Music Row. I mean, my goodness, I got on the piano, the guy's tuning the piano up right before the session, this beautiful studio. I was paying a lot of money for it. I mean, the piano tuner was a better piano player than me. <laughs> and I was just like, what am I doing here? And, and so, but you don't have to do that anymore. Right. You know, you don't have to do right. that anymore. You can, I, I, I can make records from my house. That's right. So you know, crazy. and so that's the other thing is, is that the playing field has been somewhat leveled mm -hmm. in the arts. You know, you think about Netflix, you think about film, you think about media. It's dispersed. It's right. become almost more yeah. democratic. Yeah. And There's more opportunity. There is a lot more opportunity. There's also a lot more noise. Mm -hmm. It's a double-edged oh, sword. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, 20, 25 years ago, when I first got my music distributed and out there, you know, there were a couple hundred of us that I could really think about getting their piano music out there. And one of my heroes that I studied with, played with, performed with, David Lantz, he like, he's, he's famous, he's Grammy nominated. I mean, it's, we continue to move away from record companies and control and business to anybody can kind of do this now. Right. And so to the point of competition, it becomes almost in a way more competitive because how mm -hmm. do you rise above the noise? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a two edged sword. But in terms of people just telling you, you suck it up and you know you weren't good enough for this or that. I mean, we don't do any of that sort of thing. Of but course, right. but we're honest with kids. There's a way to give constructive feedback to help you grow. It's about feedback. Mm. Right. And we actually have within our assessment models in the arts, we literally evaluate students and grade them and give them feedback in their art form. It's very specific. Well, and that That's helps cool. build their resiliency. Absolutely. And they get to learn it young. You know, they get to they do. learn it. And that yeah. will help them all throughout their lives. And it's grit. It's grit. Exactly. You know? like, like the famous work done by Dr. Dweck. It really is about sticking to it in the arts, just like it is in so many things in life. And so anyway, um, yeah, competitiveness, I think, with creatives is really tricky. Mm -hmm. It's a really mm -hmm. tricky thing. Mm -hmm. But it's still there. Oh, yeah. and, and, and you know who's the hardest on them? themselves, themselves. <laughs> right themselves yeah yeah they take that you have to be so you do have to be sensitive yeah and uh, how you how you just talk with them about right. their performance well we've got some kids over there that are willing to you know we've got some video of some kids uh, com visiting channel seven with you and yeah how, how i don't know if gratifying is the right word but how, how cool is it how gratifying is it for you when you see your kids at the school yeah. I'm, I'm using air yeah. quotes yeah. Uh, yeah step up and perform like that and 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 be themselves how how cool is uh, that it's you? it's so amazing to watch you know recently we had a group of their freshmen you know freshmen and eighth graders who had written their own music and recorded it and they went on live on channel seven's show with melissa paul yeah. and performed the song live in studio <sighs> I mean, I think it might have been a three second delay in the studio. I was there watching it and they nailed it. They nailed it. And I thought, you want to talk about pressure? It was amazing. Yeah. It was an original <laughs> song. And, so and showing for, grit and right, resiliency. Right. And, you know, and so for me, it is, it's a great way for me kind of towards the end of my career to, 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 to kind of be wrapping it up this way, to be in a school like this, to have had a hand in you know, developing this and creating this. And this is going to go on. You know, right. These kids are doing some amazing things that I never thought even 10 years ago. You know, this last year, our contemporary musicians, mm. they wrote uh, 15 songs and recorded them all in a recording studio right next door here. And then we had it mastered 
we had the CDs burned and then we had a CD release party right before oh. the holiday break. <laughs> and, you know, our uh, commons were filled and the parents were excited and kids are playing their songs. And they're like, and now you can buy my record. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like 20 years ago, I'm trying to, you know, make it and sell my sell my piano music. And it's like 20 years later, these kids are already doing it. Right. That's so, so, cool. so cool. And you mentioned working, you said a, a local recording studio. So I assume you probably have, I mean, aside from the great talent on your teaching staff, yeah. bringing in artists. Um, to kind of guest speak or guest perform yes. or lead. Can you share a little bit about that? <clears throat> Absolutely. We, that is truly one of the, the things that is really, really unique mm. about the experience at, at IFA is that we bring in great local artists. We also bring in great regional and nationally mm. known artists. You know, for example, next month on February 1st, we are going to, we're taking over the Morrison Center. You can buy tickets right now for February 1st. Okay. Got to sell that. And we have, it's called Rhythm and Roots. Justin Nielsen, who's just a renowned jazz, local jazz performer. Bill Evans, who's a very famous dance yeah. choreographer. Mm. He's working with our kids right now. He's working with them this morning through Zoom, or rather through Teams. And Justin was here with the kids. We're going to do a full production with all of our different art forms. Oh, that's I'm cool. going. Yeah, and, and through <laughs> the generous, cool. uh, mo we got most <laughs> of that paid for through the, uh, the Morrison Center's grant arm of their organization. They're very generous. They've been very supportive of IFA over the years. So we're taking over the Morrison Center. I mean, not a lot of schools in the Treasure Valley get that right. opportunity. Oh, yeah. So that's one example. Then last November, we had um, uh, my friend and colleague, I met him several years ago, world-renowned cellist, famous guy, Dave Egger comes. He's been here. This would be his third time. Went to Juilliard, and he literally is he is the most amazing guy. He he is musical genius. He loves art education, and he comes and performs with our kids. You know, he's he's done everything from record with the Rolling Stones in studio to uh, go on tour with Foreigner, writes their records for him. He went to Juilliard and Harvard. He's one of those guys. Right. I mean, one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. and he just no he, talent whatsoever. Right. Yeah. But he, you know, several years ago we came in contact with him here. And we connected with them, and he's really passionate about arts education. So we really hit it off. He's like, "Why don't why, why aren't we doing That's you know so something cool. together?" And so it's that apprenticeship model where our students are literally performing with with a guy. I want to be that guy. Right. What's right? it like? Okay, so what's it like when when they're in the room with Dave Eggers or whatever? What what's that like? Can you describe that for well, the kids and, just, and, for, and what's what's his perspective? Yeah, there? he well, he's just a really unique, humble guy in terms of wanting to use his skills, talent, ability, all that sure. to, to just sure. help young people. So <laughs> you, and we have a lot of musicians and artists and people who are in the arts, they, they want to give back mm -hmm. and they want to do that. You have to find that connection, make that connection. And you do, you have to pay them. You have to fly them out here. They're not going to just do it oh, for of free. Course, of course. I mean, it costs money. We have to raise money to bring these folks out. And, and so what is it like? It's just incredible. You know, he, we brought also with Dave this time a really well known, um, their bluegrass band from Bristol, Tennessee. Oh. And you can check that video out. We went, we were at Mountain View in their big auditorium. And it was just unbelievable performance. And they, they performed with our students all night, oh. all night <laughs> long. So and and cool. what was so great is they came about seven to 10 days. Usually they come before and we build the show with them. So what they're getting is a professional experience. Oh, I can't even imagine. For free public education. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable, That's amazing. but it's it all it all starts and stops with relationships. You have to build those relationships in the community and you have to have a passion. I, our arts team, we have a passion for high-level experiences for our kids. And so bringing in these guest artists, it's a really important part of the school. It's inspiring for for the kids and uh, and for us and for I mean it's amazing I mean, parents are always just so blown away the thing and it's so funny afterwards I had a parent after our last show in November she literally has had a kid at our school like three years and we hadn't done a, a big show like this in a couple years and she's like that is amazing and how did you get these people to come and and all these and she's like and why doesn't the world know about this and I just laughed I was like go tell your friends and neighbors yeah, yeah. listen I mean, to our podcast it's, it's, yeah. it's cool you know and, and that's the other thing we learned when we went and did our tour and we went to schools in Los Angeles and Las oh, Vegas yeah, and New Mexico yeah. and Washington and the Midwest. I, when I came back, I realized, wow, we're doing, we're already doing some really 
cool things right here at Idaho Financial Academy. How does Academy. our yeah. okay? Sorry to interrupt you, but how does our staff? So you've been all you've been all over the country looking at, at these models. Mm-hmm. How does how does your staff stack up? I mean, you touched on that briefly earlier, but how does your staff? Yeah. What what's that? What what do we look like in terms of what else is happening around the country? Yeah, we just have some amazing, dedicated professional arts staff. We don't have about 240 years of experience wow. on that staff for about 20 people, 20 professional uh, instructors. And on the art side, they are all professional level musicians, artists themselves. They'll have masters plus. They're academics, but they're also working artists currently. Right. In our contemporary uh, department chair, he plays in you know several bands. He's an unbelievable jazz musician. He's, he's great. He's a professional level player. Cool. And those kids get to play with them every day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, our vocal instructor, she's she's conducted choral music all around the world, Italy, you name it. And we're so lucky to have her. Rachel Swenson, our dance instructor. I could go right down the list. You know, Rachel's finishing her Ph.D. right now. She's a renowned dance instructor. Yeah. As a great, I mean, all of them. Our, our visual arts teacher, she, uh, Jenny Valenzuela, she is a professional artist. She's constantly doing her own work. They're working yeah. artists themselves and musicians. Every last one. Monica Palmer just made her own record, my classical teacher. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, Garrett Schmelzenbach just came to us this last year, our, um, our theater teacher. And then our new film uh, teacher, uh, he actually graduated from IFA. Oh, yeah. And so I now he's we, back. Yes. And so, oh, and that's he, cool. yeah, Full which circle. is cool. And he's, uh, and he is uh, still, hopefully, we have him for a while. We're really lucky to have him because he's a professional level actor. He's out there making films. He's uh, got a lot of great things going on. So, they're working artists who are teachers. Really hard to find. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. And really hard to keep happy sometimes. Yeah. 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 That's and, true. Yeah. And so, some of those bigger metropolitan areas like the Los Angeles and Nashville and some of these other places where they have schools like this. They have a lot of people in the arts that live in those areas, and right. so they have more access <clears throat> to people like that. It hasn't really been a disadvantage for us here. Mm. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it is it is great. And and on the academic side of house, I would just be remiss if I didn't say rock stars. Absolutely. I mean, it's just amazing, amazing. Our math instruction, English language arts. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Great teachers. It's a great blend and a great balance. Wow. Cool. Chris, I really feel like you mentioned earlier, you know, you've been in the district for a long time. I have. You've taught across the gamut, middle school, high school. This is really, mm-hmm. I would say, the cherry on top of your career to be able to, to have this be your legacy. Well, I think that's 100%. very cool. Thank you for um, saying that. I would say I've, you know, I've been so fortunate. Yeah. Really stepped in. You know, I was a 21-year-old kid when I started teaching high school English at, at Meridian <laughs> High in 1992. And I just thought, you know, where did, where did my career go? And I'm, I'm kind of down to that. You know, I'm not just in the back nine, but I'm on like 15th hole, sort of 16th yeah. hole sort of thing. Here. And, um, and it's a great place to be. And I, I've been so fortunate uh, to have the experiences I've had. And West State has given me so many great experiences. Almost all of my experience has been in West State in 32 years and at so many different levels. You know, big traditional conference of high school. You know, I, I was the principal of an elementary school middle school, yeah. high school, non-traditional high school, all those different things. And so it has been a great ride. But I will tell you that for me, this has been just extremely rewarding in the end, yeah. something that really near and dear to my heart for sure. And it's just, it's a great place to go every day. Uh, well, I, I should yeah. add in too, don't mm. panic folks. This isn't a retirement announcement. <laughs> oh, <not even. laughs> we're just, we're just talking about towards the end of a career. Yeah, yeah, no. It, 15th hole, there, you got six, three holes to play. Yeah, there You're you fine, man. There yeah. you go. No, yeah. I mean, it's, it's again, it's, I get up every day, I come to work and I pinch myself. And, you know, if I'm having a bad moment at lunchtime, I can just unlock one of the practice rooms and sit down for 10 minutes yeah. and. Plunk it out. Play, play something and. um I had a, a, an administrator that I, and this works too, used to tell me, you know, when I was having a bad day, somebody I really admire, he goes, I just go sit in the kindergarten classroom for <laughs> 20 minutes, not doing an evaluation, just sit there and listen. Yeah. That'll change. And, that, that'll and you know, that's how, I, yeah, yeah. That's how yeah. I feel when I just get to hang out with these kids every day. Yeah. It's a creative place and uh, a, a place filled also, I will mm-hmm. say, with kindness. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cutthroat. It doesn't have a cutthroat I, competitive yeah. feeling. No, and when I, I really want to make that clear that when I talk about the competitive nature of it, it's not like these kids are all going at each right. other. I'm talking about the nature of the sure. arts, sure. just like athletics and things like that. But there's such kindness. You know, mm-hmm. our theme this year at the school is unity. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and, and I, I see it every day, you know, kids supporting one another and it's great. It's a great school culture. Well, I've got to, I've got to say this, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you've been very helpful to me. Like if, if you go now, you parents out there, if you go now and look at the, the homepage of our, our YouTube, the West Ada YouTube channel, there's a, there's a video right there, the ready video. A couple of those students are from IFA yeah. and I, I call Chris up and I'm like, Hey, you got any kids that can, can perform some lines for me on camera? Oh yeah, I can. No problem. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I just appreciate you. I appreciate yeah. your kids. Yeah. It's, it's pretty you. pretty cool thing. Yeah. Awesome. And that rhythm and roots, is that what you said? Rhythm and roots, February we'll 1st. It. Yeah. Let's get that out there and let's fill it up and and come watch these kids perform with great artists. It's going to be uh, really great music and dance and spoken word, visual art. I'm so just cool. all sorts of great things going on that night. Well, I cannot thank you enough, Chris, for being here today. It's, it's just, it's a pleasure. I feel like we could talk to you for another 12 hours, but it's, just, it's great to, to yeah. be able to delve into IFA with you. Thank you for being well, it's here. It's humbling. Thank you so much for inviting me over. What an amazing conversation with Chris Housel. He, he is, he really is kind of a Renaissance man. He really is. And, and to be so, you know, I think I use the term kaleidoscope, right? Like <laughs> right, right. I would love to be that yeah. talented in so many different areas. It's, it's pretty and cool. And then share with, with our students. Yeah. It's, it, our, we've got some, uh, it's, it's very cool. Our I students over there. I, I, we say it all the time, but our kids have so much opportunity here and yeah. I just can't believe that our kids get this opportunity for free. It's very cool. It is very cool. Well, thank you again for joining us today. I, I tell you what, uh, really uh, take a look at the show notes today because we, we've got several links in there of, of the kids. You know, Chris mentioned performing the kids performing at Channel 7, some of Chris's stuff. So... I think it's worth your time to really go through the show notes today and, and look at some of those hyperlinks because there's some really, yeah. really There'll cool stuff There'll be a link to their upcoming performance yeah. at the uh, Morrison Center, yeah. Yeah. Rhythm and Roots. I think yeah. that sounds great. It's going to be a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks again for joining us. Uh, if, if you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, please leave us a review. That always helps. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And and I, I know we say it every time, but we really do want to hear from you guys. Uh, send us an email. Communicate at westada.org is where you can see us there. And uh, all of our past episodes um, at uh, westada.org slash podcast. So it's, it's just great to, uh, again, have another great episode and, 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 um, and, and have someone like Chris with us today. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, our next conversation is going to be great. We're yeah. um, having two of our local school counselors. We have Lisa Hale from Paramount Elementary right. and then Sarah Everett from Owyhee High School. Yeah. That's going to be our next episode that will drop on February 12th. Yeah. And we're really going to be talking about helping our kids navigate friendships and yeah. um, just really, you know, those intricacies of of relationship building and things like that. So. Well, and we always talk about it. You know, Katie and I are both parents here in the district, and I, I, I am really excited about this conversation because we get to have a counselor from uh, the elementary level and right. at the high school level. I think it's going to be, I think for you as parents, going to be a great episode. Yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time. <laughs>